The line has been talking about the upcoming races in the 2018 election cycle since candidate announcements first began. And this week, we want to pay particular attention to the southern part of the state since Congressman Steve Pierce decided not to seek re-election and instead run for governor. The race to take the House seat in the second has been wide open. At the line opinion table this, to talk about this and other topics of the day, I have with me former New Mexico House Minority Whip Daniel Foley. Giovanna Rossi is with us. She's president of Collective Action Strategies, LLC, and producer and host of The Well Woman Show. Lana Atkinson is here. She's a professor at the UNM Political Science Department and former state senator. Eric Grego is here. Welcome to all. Now, Eric, this field crowded four Republicans, two Democrats. Um, let's talk about the Democrats first. We've got an adjunct professor of history, Madeline Hildebrandt, Coast Guard veteran, president, resident of Socorro. She's running against Sochil Torres Small. She's a native of Cruces and an attorney. And they both say they got in the race because they were sick of sitting on the sidelines. Very interesting. You hear that a lot about politicians. They want to get in there and just kind of do their thing. However, it's an interesting district. It's been in Republican hands for a long time, save for one little two-year period. Democrats have a chance down there at this point. Is there something in the air that makes this cycle a little bit different than last time? I think if you look at what happened this week in a lot of places, the narrative is, you know, uh, are the Democrats going to be able to pick up a lot of these House seats by sort of drifting right. to the middle, or are they going to go back and really mobilize their base? And I think that's kind of how this 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 race is playing out. Right. Uh, Madeline Hildebrandt has had, got in early. She really was sort of appealing to a lot of progressive voters down there, mm -hmm. trying to sort of cobble together a strategy. Um, and and then Sochil got in a little bit later, uh, beginning of the year, and she's uh, sh both, I think, strong candidates. It's great to see two women running on the, mm -hmm. on the Democratic side, mm -hmm. and both very, you know, very, very incredibly qualified, strong, strong candidates. Um, mm -hmm. Sochil, uh, Sochil has sort of a, I think, more of a pedigree in the sense that she worked for Tom Udall. Right. She's been a, she's an attorney, a very accomplished attorney, um, deep, deep roots in, in Las Cruces. So. Mm -hmm. So and she she seems to be getting a ton of support from sort of national folks and there is a little bit of a mm -hmm. of a, a, a little bit of a let a, me ask you something about Sochil by the way she's I, I find it interesting she's thirty three she's got a pretty good track record behind her for someone so young do you know yeah, what I mean this yeah. could be the interest, beginning of something very very interesting she almost has experience you would expect someone from their early forties yeah do you know what I mean does that make a difference to you that that age I think so you know okay. Congress increasingly is a sort of a younger person's game there are right. candidates who are getting in older but typically if there's a trajectory the younger candidates who really sort of have these very illustrious careers in their young life you know worked in public policy right. worked on the hill like she did yeah. um, you know worked on uh, worked on policy issues so I think she's strong and you know, and then you have you have uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know on the Republican side. Obviously, I'm, I'm, we're going to talk about that. But there's, mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, a ahead. range of folks there as mm -hmm. well. You have a really young kind of young candidate who seems to be the only non-Trump of the three. Uh, this right. is uh, uh, Claiborne, Claiborne Griffin, interesting name, yeah. uh, young guy, also 31. Right. Um, and then you have sort of much three more sort of Trumpish uh, sort of uh, uh, Republicans. Mm -hmm. uh, only one woman on that side uh, who's a legislator who I think. Um, who I think is, again, kind of an insider favorite, although Monty Newman, uh, I'd love to hear Dan's take on this, is mm -hmm. also considered sort of a, a darling on the inside, although mm -hmm. I know he's got some issues. So that's well, Let me, let me that's actually, on that then. Yeah, that's a good yeah, point. The Republican you, side yeah. seems to be a little bit more interesting than the Democratic yeah. side to me in terms of who's going to come out of that primary. Good point there. Eric's opened it up all of us for all of us for both Republicans and Democrats here. But just to get to that Republican side of things, as Eric mentioned, Gavin Clarkson, he's a Mexico State business professor, former Trump uh, official. Claiborne Griffin was mentioned, digital marketing specialist from Lovington. And uh, we mentioned, Eric mentioned, not by name, Yvette Harrell from Alamogordo, the representative that's there now, Monty Newman, former mayor of Hobbs. That's not a bad field when you think about Republicans down there. You got to think that Republicans might be feeling, well, we have a leg up here. You know what I mean? If I get some name ID. This could be for the winning. Is that, is that a winning strategy for Republicans down there? Well, it's their strategy. I don't. Yeah. I think they're very worried about retaining that seat right now. I see. Um, you know, Las Cruces is shifting more and more progressive. Mm -hmm. um, it's been one of the areas where, you know, you could minimize your losses in Las Cruces, make it up right. in Roswell, Carlsbad, Hobbs. That's right. Can't do that anymore. Yes. Um, I think that from the Republican perspective, you know, if I was to handicap the race, I'd say it's really between Monty Newman and Yvette Harrell. Okay. Um, I would give the nod to Monty Newman. Um, the Why so? That, Why? Uh, because you know Monty has run for office before in that in that area. Um, he has stayed very active when he stayed involved with the party, um, and I think that people would perceive him coming from Hobbs with a bigger base. Mm. I think he's got pretty good support in Roswell and Carlsbad. And you start shoring up Hobbs, Roswell, and Carlsbad and CD2 as a Republican, mm -hmm. you're you're pretty much 
you know, you, you pretty pretty much got a good leg up. Mm -hmm. um, I would tell you that, you know, the people I'm talking to are very concerned about retaining that seat uh, as a Republican seat right now. Seriously? Oh, yeah. 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 I, I, I'm not sure that it's the quality of either group of candidates. Okay. I just think it's turning it's turning more and more progressive and more right. and more Democrat. Right. Um, I think, you know, the border issues are really um, uh, enticing mm -hmm. and, and, and encouraging folks from the left to get out and vote. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you're seeing uh, Cruces take more and more of a stand with people like Cervantes running for governor, um, you know, Susana Martinez right. being from Las Cruces. That's right. Um, I think that there's there's more of, of an excitement. I think Las Cruces is really energizing itself. And there's a lot of new voters in Las Cruces. A lot uh, of new people moving to Las Cruces. From the growth, that, right. From the growth, yeah. from the military bases. Um, and, you know, point. the one thing that's interesting is, is, you know, when I first started out in politics, you know, military folks were a lock for Republicans. They're not a lock for Republicans anymore. Right, right. Lana, interestingly, that district, uh, when you look at the registered voters, might surprise some folks that there's more registered Democrats than Republicans there. That would shock most people. Mm. But yet it's considered a, you know, yeah. a Republican area. How, wh how does that all work in CD2? It's well, they're conservative confusing. Democrats. Okay. So, you know, even if we think of the Democratic candidates who are on the ballot, they're both pro-Second Amendment. Uh, you know, right. John Arthur Smith's another real pro-Second Amendment guy. So there's a lot of what, Democrats right. sort of <laughs> down in our southern area that are, are um, a little more conservative mm -hmm. than we think of Democrats sort of statewide. Yeah. So that's really important. I think that there is an opportunity for the Democrats to take this race given the sort of you know, characteristics nationally. We have an unpopular president. Those things really matter. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that the governor isn't popular. You know, Republicans are, are, are not popular right now. And so right. there, you know, is more energy on the Democratic side. So there is a possibility, um, you know, especially with what happens possibly in the governor's race and how that might trickle down. That's a good point. <clears throat> These other, other good races point. might influence that. Yeah. You know, Giovanna, when you think about it, that district is so enormous. And again, it catches most people off guard, especially if you're new here, that all the way north to Las Lunas, do you know what I mean, Make, makes up part of CD2. It's a very, very odd district that way. And I'm curious if you will pick up what Lana and Dan just spoke about. Is, is there enough progressive base starting to grow there and enough no. interesting little circles in CD2 to be a factor well, in some way? Yeah, and I mean, I'll mm -hmm. echo what's been said, which is I think it is in play for Democrats. Um, I actually ran, I was the communications director for a congressional campaign down in Las Cruces 20 oh. years ago, um, and it was very different. Right. It was very different then. Like we didn't have a shot. I mean, it was right. a good experience for me coming out of graduate school and that kind of thing, but like, mm -hmm. we really didn't have a shot. I think the Democrats now really have a shot at it. And I don't think it's just that there are more progressive voters. And, and so I, I think it really is like we have a president who is really not popular. And so let's mm -hmm. let's not miss you know that point. Um, and so with his popularity, you know, tanking and then Democrats being really energized. Mm -hmm. And also, I think it's super exciting for women right mm, now, in, mm -hmm. in the country mm -hmm. and in our state and in Las Cruces. Mm -hmm. And so um, having two uh, women in the primary is awesome. I think we could see a woman come out of the primary on the Republican side and mm. then have an all-female race would be very interesting. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for, mm -hmm. for that, to watch that. There's a little bit of time we have left here, Eric. Uh, there's some, and I want Dan to get on this too, there's a feeling out there among some Republicans that if this primary stuff tilts way too far to the right, you got problems coming up in the general. You're going to basically hand a lot of things to Democrats. Do you see that happening in this race? Are we part of that swirl in this race? I don't see any particular fire-breathing Republican down there who's looking to you know, lay waste to the area. Do you know what I mean? I don't see anybody really particularly that way, but are we in Well, I, I think, you know, a lot of folks, myself included, think Pierce has been sort of out of step a little to the right of the district. And the district, is, as Dan said, has, has trended increasingly, to, you know, to a much more moderate district. It's right. not a hardcore conservative district. There are definitely parts of it, but it's, mm -hmm. it's you know, it's, it's kind of a swing district. Um, but I, I am, I am uh, concerned that, that at, at least two of these candidates, the, the two leading candidates, Monty Newman and, and Yvette Terrell, uh, Representative Terrell, are, are, you know, they're on the, on the border wall, on that's immigration right. issues. Are, I, I think pretty, pretty extreme, given that that's a, a heavily Hispanic, a lot, of, um, a lot of Hispanic Democrats and Republicans down there. Mm -hmm. And um, so I do think they're pushing sort of to the right edge of that district, which might, and if they come out of it, I think that will be 
to, to, to well, will definitely favor the, the Democrat, whoever mm. comes out of Democratic primary, right? Do you, do you see that the same as Eric is saying? Is, um, is there something I, I down that, there? I think, that, that, I think that the Republicans, most mm -hmm. of them are, are running on the old school Republican philosophy. Right. I think that they're, you know, they're, they're staying to the right, right of center. Um, I think that the Democrats are clearly stepping in to be left to center, which I think is going to... Is there an equal danger there? Uh, I don't think so, because okay. I don't think they're running left. I think they're left to center. The Re Republicans are running further right to center. Um, I think m more importantly uh, as well, I think what's going to have a big impact, you know, the, the conversations about President Trump, you know, the one thing about President Trump, mm -hmm. he's up, he's down. He's up, right. he's down. <laughs> and if he's up, you know, when it comes to the general election, the last month and a half leading out, he frees more people from Korea, does some stuff that he's done. Sure. I think it, I think it'll help Republicans. If he goes back in the tank on Stormy Daniels, it's going to be a it's going to be a bloodbath for right. Republicans. There you go. Wait, but go ahead, Jim. Add because I think it should talk a little bit more about the women because sure. uh, it, it's been such a big deal for for women in politics in the last couple of years, right? And mm -hmm. and just in the country. So I think there's a real opportunity in the Democratic primary for women to really come to politics and come to the election with their whole selves. Mm -hmm which we haven't really seen before. I mean, what do you mean by that? To, I'm curious. Well, women tend to have to leave their personal lives at the door when they go to work or, or enter the political arena. Mm -hmm. And we saw Hillary Clinton do that, and she, she sort of had to do that, but it, it didn't work for her. And so I think we have an opportunity to really shift the way we do politics. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, who, you know, who's going to be the first one to do it, and, and is it going to work? Mm -hmm. And I think with two women in the primary, they have the opportunity to actually try that out. Um, and bring bring more of being a woman, yeah. and not having not not trying to fit into the male dominated mm -hmm. um, picture that has has historically been presented mm -hmm. in politics. That's a good way to put it. It's interesting when you have two female candidates, isn't it? This could, it changes the dynamics markedly. That will we're going to cover. By the way, CD one uh, a little bit down the road, not here tonight, but uh, as the weeks go on. So don't fret about that. When we come back to the line, we'll look at paying for private school textbooks with public money.